home now and as we reported a bit earlier in the week, puzzled onlookers were stunned by a mystery object that washed up on a West Australian beach. After being discovered at the weekend, the canister has now been confirmed to be space debris. Joining us now is Glenn Nagel. He's the Outreach and Visitor Centre Manager at the CSIRO Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex. Glenn, good to see you. Thank you for your time. It was a, a big mystery. I wasn't sure if this came from a plane or a ship, but it seems that uh, the experts are now saying it's fallen out of space. It sounds pretty dangerous to me. I mean, assuming that this was some sort of space junk, we're pretty lucky, aren't we, that, we, that it landed in the ocean and washed up on a remote beach instead of landing on a, a person or a house or, or something else. Yeah, well, given that 72% of the planet is covered by water, so the odds are quite high that this stuff is going to come down in an ocean somewhere. And, of course, for this particular uh, type of launch, it seems like it might have been a polar launch to get it over the Indian Ocean regions. And uh, coming down in that area, you can actually control these re-entries to some degree. And there's a lot of effort that goes into by any space agency to ensure that you do not go over an area where there are people. Okay, so is it pretty unlikely that we'll see an increased likelihood of space debris just simply falling from the sky? I mean, we are seeing a lot more being sent up there, aren't they? Aren't we? But, but most of it is staying up there. Yeah, absolutely. It, it can always happen. Uh, just uh, last year, a piece of uh, SpaceX space debris came down in Jindabyne in uh, southern New South Wales and uh, on a, somebody's farm. So this stuff can happen and there is more stuff up there. But there's actually a lot more mitigation going on to actually reduce the amount of space debris. There are international agreements by various uh, countries and the space agencies are working very hard. And of course, now with the amount of stuff being put up there by commercial operators, a lot of emphasis is on them to ensure their debris does not come down on anybody's home. Uh, SpaceX, of course, with their reusable rockets, that's a very important thing. There are other nations and other commercial companies looking at doing exactly the same thing so that we actually create this to a zero uh, sum game. And so, Glenn, I mean, look, we've done a pretty good job of polluting the Earth, haven't we? What sort of levels are we getting to in terms of space pollution, how much is actually up there flying around? Well, there are literally tens of thousands of satellites in Earth orbit right now. There are hundreds of thousands and into the millions of objects where they might be a centimetre in size or smaller in Earth orbit. So it's really the space debris that stays up there that actually becomes the biggest hazard for other satellites, for things like the International Space Station or for any rocket that's simply launching. Uh, so uh, we have to track it. We have to make sure that we can find ways to reduce that uh, pollution that has been put up there over the last 60 years or so of space flight. And lots of countries and lots of private companies are also looking at things like space salvage, reusability of satellites, and clearing out some of this smaller space debris using things like lasers or catching nets and magnets and so forth. But the simplest thing to do, design your spacecraft so you don't end up with debris at all. So, Glenn, are there any rules around this? Like, is there an international body governing what can go up there and, and what we can do to try and clean up space? So, all countries have uh, regulations through their governments for launch licences, for what they can put up there. Uh, there are efforts that go into through the United Nations and just through collaborative agreements between nations in space about uh, where stuff is put. There are certain parking orbits for um, material that you put up there in space. And so, yes, there's a lot of effort that goes into that and to ensure that we reduce the hazard. But we put up so much stuff over there over the years that there's always a chance of collisions going on that sparks more debris. Uh, you can get little cascading effects. So it is a worry, it's a concern. Uh, but as I said, there's a lot of effort going in to actually clean up that space and environment so that we reduce this hazard to zero. Because a collision with space junk, with a, a rocket carrying asteroids, for example, I mean, that would be pretty deadly, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, it would be devastating. And the International Space Station has little debris hits all the time. The astronauts report hearing a clunk on the outside of the, of the station modules. And uh, they do actually manoeuvre because it's all tracked to this smaller debris. They can actually move the International Space Station by you know, a few kilometres if they know something's going to come within you know, something within 10, one or 10 kilometres from them. So depending on what they think the hazard is. But so far, we've never lost anybody in space. 
to a piece of space to breathe. But you never know in the future. That's why we have to clean up our game. Glenn Nagel, always appreciate your analysis. Thank you. Yes, let's hope that continues to be the case. Really appreciate your time.